Okay, so I'm pretty excited about this because to this point we've been looking at definite integrals as representing area under a curve and that's fantastic, that's true. But there are other applications of integrals, okay? And so we're gonna, we're gonna start to see that in this video by looking at integrals as net change. Okay, so uh, let's, let's start with, with an example here. So let's, let's uh, say that someone named John, John is on a weight loss, is on a weight loss mission, okay? He's on a weight loss mission. And let's, let's assume, let's assume that W prime of T represents John's rate of weight change. Right, his weight is going to be changing. This will be the rate that it's changing. John's rate of weight changing in rate of weight change in pounds per day. Okay. So let's let's think about what a graph might look for the what a graph might look like for this. So let's say um, that we've got w prime of t, w prime of t. And let's start, uh, T will be days, right? So, and this will be pounds per day. And so let's say that here's day zero, and maybe we're going from day zero to day 365. Okay, let's, let's maybe even extend this out a bit so we have more room to look at this. So this is our T axis, and he's got a, a goal here, and he's been monitoring his weight loss for the last 365 days. Now, if we, could, if we could represent this with a, a continuous graph, because his weight is always changing, right? Um, sometimes it could stay constant for a moment or something. But let's say that on day zero, he's really gung-ho, and uh, he starts losing weight. Well, maybe the graph does, does this kind of thing. So his, his weight loss rate of change, let's, let's look at, for example, day two, right? Day two. If at day two, W prime of T outputs negative 1.3, let's think about what that means so we can understand this function. So on day two, W prime of T is negative 1.3. So what that means is on day two, we have negative 1.3 pounds per day. So his rate of change on day two is negative 1.3 pounds per day. So that means at that moment in time, exactly two days after he started, he's losing weight at a rate of 1.3 pounds per day. It's negative, so he's losing weight. And so, so maybe if we look at the rest of the graph, now that we kind of understand this function, if we look at the rest of the graph, maybe it's doing something like this, where uh, he's got a negative rate of change over a certain period, and then here it hits zero. So whatever day this is, his rate of weight change is zero pounds per day. That means he's not losing weight or gaining weight at that moment in time. And then we all know this, if we've done this before, he, he goes positive, right? That's not what we wanna see, but that could happen. And so that represents that now he's gaining weight each day. His, his rate of weight change is positive. So it's, he's got a net positive change in weight. But you know he rebounds and he comes back down. He's not losing any weight. And then he's losing weight and he, he starts to gain weight again. But then eventually he sort of comes down here. He's losing weight, but eventually he can't lose much more weight. He's hit his ideal weight and he starts to, he starts to level out, right? So maybe he does something like this where he's approaching no weight loss change. Okay, no weight change. Sorry, it took me a second to think of how to say that. Uh, but maybe the graph of John's... Uh, rate of weight change looks something like this. The question is, the question is though, um, what does, what does this integral, let's say from day 
zero to day 365 of w prime of t dt represent. Now notice that we don't have a particular function that we're working with, right? I drew this graph just to get a handle on what this function represents, but we don't actually know the function. There's no details in this problem. So the question is, what does this integral represent? And so if we think about this integral as being the area under the w prime of t curve, then what that's telling us is we can, we can look at this and we can analyze it as the sums of areas of rectangles. So, for example, this area plus this area plus this area plus this area plus this area. And notice that the areas below the t-axis are negatives, okay? And the ones above are positives. So that's going to be important here. All right, so let's, let's start to analyze this question as area. And the best way maybe to do that is to analyze one rectangle, one infinitely thin rectangle under this curve and look at its area. So we've got two listed here. Let's say we're using the midpoint method. So the output of two is down here. So that'll be the height of our rectangle. And then we'll look at the rectangle like this and we can consider that area. Okay, so what I'll do is I will, I will draw that rectangle over here a little bigger. And we'll think about what this area means. Now, the area of this is going to be the height of the, the rectangle, which we know is negative 1.3, and that means pounds per day. And then we have to pick a width. Now, the width here is getting tiny, okay? The width is getting tiny. But to keep it simple, to keep it simple, let's look at a width that we can understand. Let's say that this width is one and the, the t-axis is in days. So this would be one day. So what this rectangle is representing is we don't have a curve at the bottom of this rectangle because the weight loss is, the rate of weight change is changing. We're assuming a constant rate of weight change. We're assuming a constant rate of weight change of negative 1.3 pounds per day. And if we look at the area of this rectangle, now this is the interesting part. If we look at the area of this rectangle, it equals one day, one day times negative 1.3 pounds per day, which equals negative 1.3 and then the units, the days are going to cancel, so we just get negative 1.3 pounds. That's the area of this rectangle when we put it into a context. What's that telling us? Well, it's telling us something we already know. If John is losing negative 1.3 pounds per day, and he does that over a one-day span, this area is telling us how much weight loss there is. The change in his weight, not a rate, but the actual change in his, in his weight. So this area means that we have um, a net change in weight of negative 1.3 pounds, okay? Now, if we shrink this time period, it's gonna multiply by something smaller than one and we're gonna get certainly a, a smaller change in weight over a shorter time period. How is that helping us understand the area under this curve from zero to 365? Well, if we add, if we add the areas of all of these, let's, now let's make this an infinitely thin rectangle if we can. Like right there, there's an infinitely thin rectangle. And if we do that and we add the areas of all of these infinitely thin rectangles, then all we're doing is we're adding all of these net changes in weight together. And so in the end, when we go from zero to 365, what this is telling us is that we're going to get, we're going to get a net change in John's weight, in John's weight, from day zero to day 365. Now, it's a subtle thing. W prime is a rate of change, and when we integrate it, we just get a net change in the weight. 
right? Think about multiplying pounds per day, the vertical unit, the W prime unit, pounds per day, times days. When you multiply those together, you get pounds. So you're just gonna get how much the pounds change, and the time period is gonna be based on the two times in your integral, okay? Now, another way to look at this, because this is W prime, if we just use the fundamental theorem of calculus and think about how to evaluate this, then how do you evaluate a definite integral? You do it using antiderivative. What is the antiderivative of W prime? Well, it goes back up and becomes W. Since W prime is the derivative of W, the antiderivative of W prime is W. So the antiderivative of W prime is W of T. Now, what's W of T? Well, W prime is the rate of weight change in pounds per day. So W would not be a rate of change, it would just be pounds. So W of T would just be John's weight. So when you integrate, when you find the antiderivative of the rate of change of weight, you just get weight. And we'd still have to evaluate that antiderivative from zero to 365. And so the way to do that would be to plug 365 in so that'd be W of 365 minus W of zero. And look at what this means. This is John's weight on day 365 because it's W now. It's just the weight function. So this is John's weight on day 365 and we're taking away from it John's weight on day zero. So this is literally, when you look at it using the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is literally the net weight change from day zero to 365. So you can see it using the fundamental theorem of calculus. You can see it thinking of it in terms of areas. It's all the same, okay? Now, uh, this, is a, this is a really good example to see what's, what's going on here. If, if you integrate a function that is a rate, then it turns into a net change in a function that's not a rate, necessarily. I, I suppose um, sometimes rates could be something like acceleration. So acceleration might be uh, feet per second per second. So it's a change in speed every second. If you were to integrate this with respect to time, you'd be multiplying this unit here by time and this would cancel and you would just get feet per second or velocity, okay? But um, when you integrate, think about areas to understand your unit. So in this case, the area would be your height, which is a rate of change times your width, which is a time. And when you multiply those, the time will cancel with the time in the denominator on your rate of change.